Traditional texturing, it's like watching paint dry, only slower. I mean, who's got the time to painstakingly lay out UVs and hand paint every single inch of their models? Nobody's got time for that. I've been there, I've done that, I've got the virtual t-shirt, but here's the thing. Not all assets are created equal, nor do they deserve to be treated the same. And that's when I say, f*** it, and go the entirely procedural route. Let's embrace the beauty of procedural textures and materials. They're straight up cheat codes for look dev artists, and trust me, you'll never look back. And while your friends are slaving away pushing verts, rotating UV shells, while wearing a fancy beret and calling themselves real artists, you'll be running laps around them, pumping out your fifth full environment by the time that they've finished that perfect hubcap hidden in motion blur that nobody's going to notice. Disclaimer, no virtual UVs were harmed in the making of this video, and remember, always procedurally textured responsibly. If you're far enough from an object, if you know it'll be dark, or out of focus and motion blurred, then you really don't need to put in the extra effort for something that ultimately won't be seen. Don't get me started on those Hollywood films that love burning money on unnecessary details. I've lost count of the amount of times that I've hero sculpted or painted intricate details for up close turntable reviews, only to have them end up as a tiny five pixel wide highlight in the background of a shot. Talk about feeling valued. So now I try to avoid that whenever I can. One of the best tools for generating procedural materials are seamless textures, as they can be a great base for the material, or they can be used to mask features of the model to create effects like dust, dirt, drips, or edge damage. For that, let's bend the knee once again to our AI overlords for a minute. It's here whether we like it or not, and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to embrace it, but one thing is for sure though, it can speed the hell out of your process. Previously I made a video describing how I'm using AI image generators like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion to generate tileable textures, then extracting PBR maps from the images to quickly get a base for tileable materials. But recently I've found a tool called With Poly, and this takes it to a whole other level. It's like having Stable Diffusion and Substance Sampler or Materialize all rolled into one. Just type in a prompt and boom, all of your texture maps are generated and ready to rock and roll. So let's take one step closer to total AI assimilation, um, automation, and our textures will thank us for it. Their app can be tested for free by heading over to withpoly.com and either downloading some existing textures directly from their library, or if you can't find what you're looking for, simply write your prompt into the search bar and hit generate. It'll then generate the PBR maps for you and show you a sample in the viewport. There are tons of options to play with. You can start from existing images or directly from text prompts. They have an AI tool to make your images seamless, so even if you want to make seamless materials out of your own non-seamless images, that's an option. They even have an AI upscaler to significantly increase the resolution and image quality of your textures. Once you bring the maps into 3D, you can decide whether you want to apply the map directly to the UVs, or if you want to go the even more procedural approach that doesn't rely on having good UVs, like triplanar projection. This method essentially projects the texture onto the object from multiple angles and allows you to blend it together. I love finding cheats to create usable 3D assets because I hate how long it takes to create good looking 3D scenes. If you're using Arnold, the utility node is a great thing to mess around with. It's a playground for look dev nerds. Pair that up with what should be your best friend by now, the remap node, and you've got a seriously powerful combination. Sometimes I stumble on some really cool ways to make use of it. Like blending some of the polygons of this sphere over the dust created by the Y values of the normals to create some sci-fi panel breakup in the dust of this tech rebuild material. You can find interesting ways to add a lot of procedural detail to a seamless texture. In general, the whole concept of these procedural setups revolves around using seamless maps and utility data, blending and remapping them to create feature masks that you can use to blend colors or seamless textures together. As an example, this entire space ring was textured without spending a second doing any UVs faster than the ship itself can hit light speed. It's simply a seamless tech panels texture that's been triplanar projected over the surface at a high repeated frequency. I use the same remap texture for diffuse height and roughness, because why use it once when I can use it thrice, right? And the thousands of little lights, that same texture again, crunched all the way down to isolate small dots, which is what I use in the emission channel. It's like throwing confetti at your model to create galactic disco party on the surface. I also use a procedural ambient occlusion node to add some dirt and dust buildup where two objects meet. From there, you could even use methods like stochastic texturing or texture bombing to break up the obviously tiled look of your textures to get a more natural feel. This is exactly what I did with this mountain environment. Once again, nothing in the scene has been UV traditionally or textured and painted in any way. In fact, it's simply just a few layers of procedural nodes like fractal noises for a general breakup, ambient occlusion for some additional breakup in shadowy or convex areas, a curvature 
aperture node to isolate the cavities, which can be seen as little rivers, and utility nodes using the normals of the object, grabbing the green channel to sprinkle some snow onto the top of upward facing polygons, as well as a utility node set to a shading point to create a snowy fall off near the peak of the mountain using the world position of the object. Even the trees are procedurally generated. They're just another seamless texture map generated by AI of some trees seen from above that are tiled across the surface and used to create a strong displacement effect that looks sort of like trees. I even cleverly used the shading point utility mask that I used earlier for the snowy parts to mask out the displacement near the peak of the mountains so that I wouldn't have as many trees up there. This approach isn't limited to large objects or environments either. Take this building for instance. Again, no real UV work and definitely no painting. I used a lot of the same techniques that I did with the mountains. The general concrete textures generated with, with poly were used as a base which I triplanar projected with a triplanar node in Arnold. I used the cell option with a bit of rotation and blending to texture bomb the image and get some less obvious tiling. I then add some ambient occlusion for masking dirt around the billboards and other shadowed areas to make it look like it's been sitting in the rain for too long. Curvature to isolate the edges of the model, masking with a seamless grunge texture to create some edge damage. I then add up the red and green normals to get some extra details along the surface normals that I created with Bump. Speaking of Bump, I used a UV ramp with the white value slid all the way down to create panel lines throughout the model. But why stop there? I then add a slight noise deformation to it and mask its intensity with a noise pattern and add that to the bump of the seamless concrete texture. Again, like the mountain material, I use the world position shading point to add a dark dirt fall off from the top and another one to mask out the bottom area and blend a gray cement or concrete color harshly across the bottom to have some obvious material variation between the top and bottom of the building. And to top everything off, another AI generated image of some seamless graffiti triplanar projected and masked over the top of the diffuse to give it a bit of a spray painted makeover. What's great about these procedural setups is that you can keep reusing the material on many assets without having to worry about the UVs not matching up. And if you've had a few bad dates with UVs in the past, then you might want to consider this approach. Once you have the material set up, you'll be churning out buildings faster than McDonald's serves up burgers. It's amazing for filling out huge cities very quickly without having to hand paint every building or variation of the same kind of building. To take things a step further, you can make use of OSL nodes if you want to delve deeper into the procedural rabbit hole. You could write your own if you really want to show off or just use some existing ones if you really want to go fast. Just drop the code into your node to compile it and start plugging it into your network directly. There are OSL nodes to handle the stochastic texturing we discussed earlier to do fancy things like directional underhanging dirt drip, spiderweb micro scratches around light sources, single plane window materials, and the list goes on and on. The possibilities are endless and I'd encourage anyone interested to look into it further. I'll leave some links to some useful OSL shaders and other cool resources below and for anyone interested in trying out with Poly, head over to the site at withpoly.com and use the promo code YouTube to get started for free. We're definitely going full speed towards a Terminator level AI takeover now folks. Godspeed and until next time, keep rendering.